Welcome, everybody, to Root Cause Analysis. I am Gary Freeman, and I have over 30 years' experience working in the pharmaceutical and device uh, area. Um, this tenure has included a lot of work with sponsors and site audits and consulting many groups in regard to regulatory uh, audit Documentation of good root cause analysis is essential in this uh, piece with the regulatory authorities. They're looking for corrective action, they're looking for preventive action or CAPA plan as well. Um, and it is expected by all regulatory authorities across the world that we will be looking at compliance with our investigators. As you all know, if we don't have compliance at the investigator level, we are to stop our study. So that's an important um, According to the FDA quality system evaluation approach, once a problem or noncompliance is identified in a work process, it must be resolved before we continue the activity or release the product as well. We're going to discuss methods today or techniques of arriving at root causes and the proper intervention to resolve issues that we find in our daily tasks in clinical research. By the end of this session, I hope that the terms gap analysis, root cause analysis, intervention, and effectiveness will be common in your vocabulary in your everyday practice. We never should avoid fixing something if we can possibly get to the bottom of it. Getting to the bottom of it means looking for the root cause. Why did whatever it is happen? How can we pre fix it, if possible? And how can we prevent it from happening at that site or any other site in the future? So as we get started then, let's look at what we're about to learn today. We're going to define what root cause analysis is, what it involves. It's going to implement Gilbert's root cause analysis diagnostic process. That's a long word. We're going to have a chart to show you how to implement that process for doing root cause. We'll apply that analysis in clinical trial study management, and we will assign the right intervention for successful solutions. We're going to proactively use the root cause analysis to manage our stakeholder compliance. Stakeholders would be like the IRB, any other vendors that we're using, a CRO if we're a sponsor, and a site. We're going to learn how to effectively use our clinical research associate management skills and a few more skills as well. As we do this, we need to think about that managing compliance, and it is vital to successful clinical trials. The regulatory authorities, as I mentioned, expect this through our quality systems. This would include identifying the noncompliance to things like SOPs. Sometimes there are our own SOPs that we need to, to look at. We may need to update our SOPs as part of the solution. Maybe they're outdated. Maybe they're not including risk analysis, which is a big issue today. Maybe they don't have all the electronic terms in them. And we've gone, in many cases, to all electronic CRFs. Our, CR, our SOPs might still be talking about paper CRFs, things of that nature. We need to learn to intervene and when to intervene and to evaluate the effectiveness of that intervention. That's one of the critical pieces that we often don't document, how effective our solution was. When we don't have it documented, it didn't happen, according to the FDA. So that's a very, very important piece. We often cite a problem in our monitoring visit report, and then the next monitoring visit, that issue has gone away. So we just drop it. We feel if we just drop it, it would be obvious that it was resolved. It's not there anymore. That's not true. FDA would want us to put a clause in there that it has now been resolved, and hopefully a timeline to show that we acted on it very quickly. The proof, then, is that documentation. And we need to show often how we came up with that intervention. What was it that we did to resolve the problem? Without the root cause analysis, the interventions can't be effectively identified and, de and designed. For so the problem will come up again or with another monitor and no one is aware of how we handled it in a previous situation. A lot of money is spent on ineffective evaluations. Just because it, we always did it that way may not be the best way 
today. We have to think about the risk that was involved. Risk-based systems have success connected to them, and the, the success is related not just to the assessment of the risk, but also the intervention assignment for management of that risk for positive impact. Regulatory obligations, for example, compliance management. It's not just risk as it sits there, but how we handled that risk, what we're all doing to make it better. It might be rewriting the protocol. It might be an amendment to the protocol. So it's not just risk with us, and also it's risk with others if we're working with CROs, for example. How we handle something, how are they handling it? Risk cause analysis is a scientific concept. It can be applied specifically in a clinical trial setting as well. The root cause analysis is invaluable for all the stakeholders in clinical research. All the vendors we use, and the more vendors, the more we increase our chance of risk. Root cause is very important to investigate here.